You need a rest? <laughs> now, Anne shared the piano with Julie, but you didn't share the pedals, did you? Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you this morning to the Bethel Church. Uh, we hope that you will be blessed being here and blessing others when you leave. We welcome those folks who are watching at home in their jammies with a cup of coffee in their hand. We do not hold it against you. We still... We still would like to see you here with us on a Sunday morning. Uh, all is well. Is Susan here? <laughs> all righty. Well, okay, we can, uh, do we have any prayer requests? This I okay. have. Oh, you have a microphone. Okay. I have a prayer request. A friend of mine, Mark Newman, he has some very serious health concerns, and I ask you to pray for him. We want to thank you for all the thanks and prayers for Paul's sister, uh, Teresa Cheeks. On her return trip home, she did pass away, but we'll be going back up for funeral arrangements, but. Thank you for all the prayers. My grandson Henry got through his MRI fine. We just don't know any results yet. Yeah. But he, he made it. He did it. Are we still waiting for results? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Get here when you can. So. <laughs> <laughs> when you get old like me, you get... You get a chance, you know, to have a little bit of freeway, right? It's Zeke's fault I'm late, so I'm not going to worry about it. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well on this beautiful day. Uh, I had a chance to, uh, by the way, welcome back. Glad to see you. Oh, I'm glad you're better. Um, I didn't know if it might have been my fault that... Um, Barbara Chips had fallen and had an accident, and uh, I called her yesterday, and she has, has moved to, um, Calhoun. where? Calhoun. Yeah, Calhoun. I knew it was a C word, I just couldn't remember. Uh, she is in a wheelchair, uh, and uh, Pam, her daughter, has had to quit work to take care of her. She stayed in the... Um, assisted living or something yeah. or rehab yeah rehab place for a little while and she said she just she knew she probably would ha that would happen she just got on a little step and fell off of it and broke her leg in a lot of places and it's still uh, from the surgery she's still having a lot of problems and um, but she has that cheery attitude like she always does and she said to tell everybody hello. And I do have uh, written down in my purse um, her address and phone number if you'd like to have send her a card. I know she would appreciate it. But um, she misses everybody. and it. But she likes where she's living, you know. And her daughter is, like I said, taking care of her right now. And I talked to Marvin yesterday. Um, we communicate on... Uh, uh, Facebook, uh, not Facebook, but the other one. Imagine that. But he said to tell everybody hello. He still has long COVID, they call it, and he's having still having some problems. But overall, he's doing a little bit better. And I talked to Pam McMicken, and she said that Emily has improved. It's not 100%, but she is doing better. And you had told them about Sheila. You want to talk? Well, I just wanted everybody to continue their prayers for Sheila. She'll probably go in the rehab one day this week, and but it's going to be in Lafayette. So it'll be. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, close to Dalton. 
But anyway, I also wanted to lift up Casey and her family. My cousin Tracy texted me and said they weren't going to be here this morning because they're sick. So just pray for Casey and them to feel better. Oh, yeah, I had uh, that was my next one. See, I try to remember these, and it don't always come out. Uh, I did talk to Debbie Pope several times this week, and she's she's had a rough time. I think it was more than she expected, but um, she is improving, and her goal is to be able to get up on the bed by herself. Right, Mary? <laughs> Does anybody have anything else? Yes, ma'am. Flowers are here, and we have them in the fellowship room. I just want to say a thank you, thank you, thank you to all the ladies who contributed to our fundraising ride yesterday. We did a 1,000 mile. We had 24 hours in which to complete it, and we did it in 16 hours. And I am still awake and able to come in. I'm going to go home and go to bed when I leave here. But I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know exactly how many bikes um, were involved. I will get the number and bring it back later. Or how much they raised. I know at, right now we're at maybe about $410 ourselves um, that we contributed to it. So our ladies here, you contributed $90 when I came to the women's group and put it out there. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all the prayers for our safety and for the monies as well. All right. Thank you, Denise. Hey, good morning, everybody. It is good to be back here in the house of the Lord. And uh, it's just beautiful weather. I hope that you've got good weather to work outside now in the landscaping business. So it's, I'm afraid it's going to be a hot summer, though. But uh, but it's good to, to be back here. Um, I wanted to let everybody know it. I'm glad that, uh, that, Darren, that you mentioned that the Mother's Day flowers. So you got them in the fellowship hall? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hey, and I still got one from last year. I should have two, but I forgot one. I left it outside in the cold weather, got it. So uh, we've, we've got the uh, hanging baskets. Yes, thank you so much for that. If you'd like to go ahead and mark your Bible for the scripture reading, um, the first reading is going to be out of 1 John. It's going to be on page 1126 in your pew Bible, 1126. Do you have a reader today? Okay, uh, and then also the sermon is going to be out of the book of Luke. Last chapter is going to be on page 972, 1126 and 972. If you want to, you want to mark your your Bible where the where the reading is going to come from. Don't forget on May the fifth we have Mother's Day breakfast for all the ladies. Okay. And we'll have a we'll have a guest speaker to come in and talk, and I think that will, uh, if that's okay with you you folks, about me incorporate part of the Sunday school class, because uh, we'll ha we'll start eating around nine o'clock or so, and um, and that way we'll uh, uh, ha it'll, it'll be like our payback for the ladies who help us so much for the barbecue every year that because we couldn't do this barbecue if we didn't have the ladies feeding or helping feed the the, um, the mass as they come through the lines. So we thank you ladies for that. And um, we've got a um, guest speaker, and I've, I've invited my, my eldest sister, I guess I should call my big sister, Deborah, to come and speak. She remembers she was the uh, probate judge here in Paulding County for about 20 years. And um, she, a um, God-fearing lady who, I've asked to come and speak before, but she felt like this was the time to come. So it'll be on May the 5th. And Denise, what happens six months from now and uh, this week? The barbecue. the barbecue is right. So plan your vacations accordingly. 
so that you don't have your vacations planned on October 19th. That's a Saturday. That's to be the third Saturday in, um, in, in October. So don't plan no vacations that Saturday. That's right. Y'all went to high school together and got, got disciplined several times for, for talking too much. <laughs> oh, yes. And, that, and that's good that you got those childhood memories. Of, or rather, I guess you would say that'd be your teenage, yes. teenage memories, yes. A lot of people still on the, on the prayer list. And uh, if you look in the middle section of your bulletin, uh, that we've got things are going on. So, um, and also... Uh, um, if you would like to use the facilities for anything, anything, there's the website. Heather put that in there in the bulletin. Make make her job easier and make your your job easier as far as planning uh, anything. If you need the uh, the uh, the buildings for anything, that there's where you go to it. Um, <clears throat> uh, we got um, still have the rummage sale coming up, right? And if you've got any any gently used items that you'd like to bring, no clothing, but something that you'd like to donate, you can bring it in here to the to the fellowship hall. Anything that you might purchase, look at it like that. Don't bring no junk, nothing that's gonna that's gonna have to get thrown away. So if you'd like to bring that. Also, Denise, you still got the camp cards for sale? Ten bucks, okay? And that's good. And um and it and it uh, has a lot of different offers to uh, that you can save money on, and it's something that we that we I have one, and I keep all year long. It helps out when you go out to buy things, uh, like if you go out to eat or somewhere. Um, and we forgot to use ours yesterday, Sandy. You're right. I just thought about that. <clears throat> so um, we got a uh, today, Brian. We're gonna need you for sure. Okay. Okay, we got right after church. We still got a little project going on. Okay, so, okay. Si- since you're the you're the young guy, you and you and uh, Jacob, we're gonna need you two guys for sure. Uh, we got a little project going on right after church. Hayden, don't get no herd to run off either, buddy. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, have a. Yes, ma'am. Okay, right after church. All you got, Brian. Hayden, <laughs> Jacob, right over here. Okay, and uh, and uh, we've got a we've got a surprise that's going to be coming up for the church here um, in the future. Okay, so um, and it's going to be a good thing. It'll be a, a new thing for the church, and it's it's good that we'll have it. Um, am I overlooking anything else that uh anything that I'm overlooking? Okay. Oh, we've got the doors open. We've got some fresh air coming in. Uh, it won't be long. We won't be able to have the doors open because of the, the heat will be. So enjoy the springtime while we've got it. So any, any, anybody else got anything? Okay. If you'll join me in prayer. Lord, we come to you this morning in prayer. And I, I humbly thank you, Lord, for being able to lead the prayer this morning. I, I ask you, Father, to forgive me of all my shortcomings. I, Lord, I'm the worst sinner that you're going to meet all day. And I just I ask you, Lord, to continue to forgive me for my sins. But I thank you, Lord, to be able to, uh, to come to you in prayer. Thank you, Father, for the church that's here today. I thank you, Lord, for the history that, that's, that's here, that rep, this represents, Father. You, you really stood by your little church so, for so many years. And I thank you, Father. I ask you, Lord, that we not forget those who came before us, Father. I just ask you to continue to keep the doors open, Father, to the church. I ask you, Lord, to continue to help us to pay our bills. We thank you, Lord, for this little church. It's, it means so much to, to each of us, Lord, and we just give you all the praise and the glory. I ask you, Father, to be with um, Israel. I ask you to be with Israel, protect Israel. Father, I know that you're there to protect uh, the homeland of the Jewish people, Father. I ask you, Father, to bring peace to this world, Lord, but we've all read the Bible. We know how it ends, Father. It's going to be a good ending, Lord, and I know that you're there for us, Father. I ask you to be with um, uh, Leslie today. She delivers the message. I thank you, Father, for her. I ask you, Lord, to be with Miss Lanier. She leads the music because I know the music will be pleasing to your ears, Lord. And, and Father, I just thank you for again for keeping the doors open and continue to lead those who need a place to come and worship. Lead them here, Father. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I am so glad to see you all here today. And you people online that we can't see, we're going to wave to you. Everybody wave. There we go. We wish you to come and see us at some point. Anyway, if you would take your hymnal and look at number 107, ask you what great thing I know. 107 as we stand singing the first and last verses, please. Now turn right over to number 540. And I was so surprised when I looked in this hymnal, Denise, and they had love, mercy, and grace in here. And Aunt Totsie sat right over there, Frida, and she'd say, Ann, now you need to, whatever she wanted to tell me to do, that she was going to tell me to do it. All right, 540, first and last, here we go. Let us join together in the affirmation of our Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Be seated, please.
Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, the light of your love shines on, illuminating the places where you are present. As the bewildered disciples pondered the stories of your appearance, you penetrated the darkness of their fears and doubts with your word of peace. You showed them the appalling marks of evil pierced on your hands and feet. You opened their minds to understand why you had to die to defeat such evil and death. Increase our understanding, we pray, and open our minds and hearts to receive you. Lord, hear our prayers. We hold before you, most compassionate one, the special concerns and needs that rest upon our hearts at this time. Hear our prayers as your church in this place for those we have lifted before you this morning. Father, we come to you this day not only for ourselves, but for others, for those who do not know your peace, for those who have not yet found any rest, for those who struggle with those things we have brought before you. We ask your healing to be upon those who are sick, your strength to be with those who are tired, your wisdom and your love to be with those who live with despair and fear. Lord, hear our prayers. Father, grant us peace in our world, peace in our nation, peace in our communities, our homes, and peace in our lives. We are grateful for our United States and for our independence. We lift before you our president and his cabinet. We lift our military, our law enforcement officers, our first responders and their families. We pray that they might have a strong faith. We pray for wisdom and strength and courage in all that they do. Lord, hear our prayers. Bless us and your whole church with the gifts you give us for our life together and for the mission you call us to complete in Christ's name. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring to us, O oh God, the sense of your living presence as we go into this new week. Renew us in the faith you want us to have, the faith that is not afraid to reach out in your name and to share the treasure that you have given us, the treasure which is greater than silver or gold. Guide us each day as we minister to one another and to the world for which you gave yourself. Help us each day to bear witness to your name and to do that which you would have us to do. We ask you to hear all of our prayers, O oh God, in the name of the one who taught us to pray to you as one family, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You're by yourself today. That's okay. I have a secret. How do you feel when someone keeps a secret from you? Happy, sad, mad? In the middle? That's a really good secret. Well, how would you feel if you were the one keeping the secret? It's a really good secret. I feel very important that I know this secret and I'm not telling anybody. I feel important. However, I'm going to tell you the secret. Jesus. 
so much for secrets. <laughs> okay, so now you know the same secret that I know. Do you think that Jesus would want us to keep this secret? Nah, this secret's a good secret, right? Okay, so I told you the secret, so now we're going to kind of whisper it together. Jesus Okay, now we're going to say it a little louder, just a little louder. Jesus is alive. Now we're going to say it louder. Jesus is alive. That's a great secret, but Jesus doesn't want us to keep it a secret. He told his disciples to go and tell everybody that this was his new life. He was, he was, he was, up, erased, he was raised from the dead, and now he's going to do the things that he promised to do. And all of his disciples need to go and tell people that Jesus is alive. And so we're going to tell the people because maybe they didn't hear us because we were whispering and not talking to us. So now together, you and I, you're going to stand up and you're going to face. And together we're going to say, Jesus is alive. Praise God. Thank you. This is a story that's not too good to be true. Let's pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks and praise for your risen son. And to be able to tell the story that, yes, Jesus, your son is alive and he is just waiting to help us. Lord, for all that you do for us by sending us your son, we are grateful. And we give you thanks always. Amen. Would you stand for the doxology, please? Thank you. Be seated, please. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not... Be afraid.
Good morning. morning. I'll be reading from 1 John 3. Uh, Okay, I'm sorry. We're not there. 1 through 7. (laughs) See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that he... And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of God for the people of God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel if you are able. From Luke 24, 36 through 48. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The word of God for us, people of God. Please be seated. This particular text might sound a little bit like last week's text, but this is Luke speaking. A little boy's father gave him a quarter as the child headed off to church. Here he said, as he, here said the father as he put the money in the boy's hand, give this to God this morning. When the father saw the boy later, he asked as to whether he gave the money to God. No, the boy answered. God wasn't there this morning. There are times when we too may wonder about the presence of God. We may hit a patch of trouble. We may pray and seem to find no one to be there. We may find a seemingly impenetrable dark cloud hovering over us and wonder what happened to God. Life may seem to be in a meltdown and comfort hard to find. Clearly not feeling the presence of God at that moment. 
Frank's dream of visiting the Holy Land had finally come true. He had planned his trip carefully, and his visit culminated in an Easter Sunday visit to the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. This ancient church is revered by many Christians as the traditional site of Jesus' burial and resurrection. As Frank waited in a long line of pilgrims, his anticipation and his excitement built. His mind wandered back and forth between images of all the sites that he had visited over the past week and thoughts of standing in the place where Jesus was supposed to have been buried after his crucifixion. Finally, it was his turn to enter into the sepulcher itself. Amazingly, Frank's initial response was not the anticipated elation of experiencing this sacred site. Instead, Frank felt a feeling of disappointment. He caught himself muttering aloud, why did I wait in line so long? It's just an empty tomb. A woman nearby heard what he said and interjected, saying, Sir, isn't that the point? It's an empty tomb because Jesus is alive. Frank smiled as he realized the truth of her words. His heart beat strongly for the overwhelming sense of joy and peace that came upon him at that moment. Christ is risen indeed. Our text today finds Jesus' disciples kind of in a similar mood on this first Easter Sunday. They are perplexed, they're troubled, and they're frightened about the events of the last couple of days. In little more than a week, they had experienced the exuberance of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem as the crowd welcomed him a long-awaited person of royalty. They had listened to him quarrel with religious leaders. They had witnessed the arrest and the sham of a trial that condemned him to die. Most troubling of all, they saw firsthand his brutal death on a cross between two criminals. They had even heard his sorrowful cry. These men who had given up everything to follow Jesus because they had believed that he was the long-awaited Messiah. But now he was gone. Or was he? Luke reports a series of encounters that transformed this group of frightened and confused disciples into an organized movement of passionate apostles who would live out their days as world changers. What happened to make this possible? Is the story of Jesus' resurrection a credible report, or is it simply just too good to be true? Luke describes a series of events. First, in verses 1 through 12, some women go to the tomb, but discover that the stone is rolled away and Jesus' body is not inside. Two angels tell them that Jesus is risen. They go and report what they have seen and heard to the disciples. Peter runs to the tomb to see for himself, but he leaves confused and perplexed clearly not feeling the presence of God at that moment. Secondly, verses 13 through 35 tell of the encounter on the road to Emmaus. Two followers of Jesus were walking to Emmaus when they were joined by Jesus himself. They, however, did not recognize him. They talked with this stranger about Jesus and about the events of the last few days. 
Upon reaching Emmaus, they ask the stranger to stay with them because it's getting late. As they gathered for a meal, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them. And at this moment, their eyes were opened, and they finally recognized Jesus. Then Jesus disappears. The two disciples raced back to Jerusalem to tell the others. The 11 were gathered together, stunned by grief, racked by hopelessness, and in need of God's strength, clearly not feeling the presence of God at that moment. When they got there and they told their story, while they were talking, Jesus himself appeared saying, Peace be with you. What is striking about this encounter in Luke is the reaction of the disciples. Verse 37 says, they were frightened by Jesus. Why were they frightened? How could they have been so clueless? Perhaps we take the story of the resurrection for granted. Think about it for a minute. How many dead men and women do we know who have come back to life? Most of us have lived long enough to know that the grave marks the end of our life. This is as true today as much as it was true at the time of Jesus' death. Ancient people were not any more naive about the finality of death than we are today. How many of us really believe that Jesus' body was literally raised from the dead? Yet, yet, folks, our text asserts just this. Many of us may relate to the reaction of the disciples in verse 41. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. For them... The fact that Jesus stood before their very eyes was simply too good to be true. But why? If Jesus were truly alive, then this would mean that he really was the long-awaited Savior from God. If Jesus were truly alive, then everything he taught and promised would be validated. If Jesus were truly alive, the disciples would suddenly have infinite value and potential because this same Jesus had called them as his initial followers. Jesus breaks through the unbelief of the disciples with a simple gesture. He requests some food and he eats it in front of them. And in verses 44 through 48, Jesus offers what must have been the greatest Sunday school class ever, ever taught. He opens their minds to the scriptures and carefully instructs them on how those scriptures had foretold his suffering, his death, and his resurrection. And that the result of this would be the proclamation of salvation to all the nations, beginning in Jerusalem. Jesus then appoints them as his witnesses and promises a power from on high to help accomplish the mission. So my friends, what what is the story all about? It's quite simple. Jesus' resurrection is not merely a story for hope in the future. It's a commission. It's a command. It's a command to participate in God's plan of salvation. In light of Jesus' resurrection, his church has called us to mission. And the mission field begins in our present location and extends to the edges of the world. 
mission becomes the reason for the disciples' continued existence on this earth. By being witnesses to the resurrection, they will become the ones who will start the chain that carries the true significance of the resurrection to, well, everywhere. The resurrection proclaims that forgiveness of sins is possible as well as is the transformation of lives. The world as we know it does not have to be this way. God intends something better and greater. And he has given this message to Jesus' followers. What about us? What does the resurrection mean for us today? Friends, if Jesus is alive today, we have the hope of true and authentic transformation in our lives. If Jesus is alive today, we can offer the world substantial healing. If Jesus is alive today, we can live courageously for an ethic greater than our own comfort and indulgence. If Jesus is alive today, we can console a grieving family with the hope of a final resurrection. If Jesus is alive today, we can work meaningfully on behalf of the poor and disenfranchised. If Jesus is alive today, we can surrender all of our peculiarities, our infirmities, our sins, our gifts, talents, and ambitions to God and allow God to raise us to a new life in which we begin to represent Jesus' values and to reflect his character to the world around us, which so desperately needs voices of hope and light. To that little group gathered in Jerusalem, meshed together in fear and trembling, our Lord asked, why? Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Of course, he knew the answer to his question, for even he had known the agony of a troubled spirit. But Christ also knew that the surrendered life, the faith-filled life, has its rewards talking with his friends after the resurrection, he assured them that they could do anything that confronted them, anything. And friends, so can we. We can be sure that Christ wants us to know that his presence is always offered to us as well. He will never leave us or forsake us in good times and in bad, in delight or in sorrow, in victory or in trouble, in sickness or in health. What about us? What if Jesus is truly alive today? What if following Jesus means living a radically new life? Too good to be true? Some would say yes. Those original witnesses, they would tell us no. Not too good to be true. Christ is alive. Christ this very day stands with us and will do so until the end of time. Christ is alive and the world will never be the same again. So what do you say, folks? Too good to be true? Amen. Turn in your hymnal, please, to number 457, Rescue the Perishing, 457, as we stand singing the first verse, please.
Friends, receive the benediction. Go in peace. Love and care for one another in the name of Christ. And may you be blessed by the awareness of God's continual presence and power. May your path be lit by God's all-surrounding and indwelling spirit. And may the joy and love and wisdom of the risen and living Christ fill your hearts both now and forevermore. Amen.